what you're being shown here is the life cycle of a cell. The cell is undergoing its regular cell activity during an area known as interphase. And then when it's dividing and creating daughter cells, it's going through the mitotic phase. And this lecture focuses on mitosis. Uh, before I get into any detail with the cell cycle, I want you to appreciate that in blue here, this lighter blue color, the entire thing is interphase. And we're gonna break that apart into three different sections. You can appreciate, let's imagine that this is the entire life cycle of a cell, the entire life uh, that that cell experiences. Mm, let's say every 24 hours, it depends on the type of cell. A skin cell is gonna have a much shorter life cycle. It likes to replicate a lot versus a neuron is not going to like to replicate a lot. So it just depends on the cell type. But let's say every 24 hours, we can appreciate that interphase constitutes a huge chunk of that 24 hours. The cell, usually cells are in interphase for quite a long time. They're just being a cell during the interphase and doing some other things that I'll point out. Mitosis does take a big chunk of their life cycle, but not as much as interphase. Students always like to tell me that the cell is undergoing mitosis at a much higher rate than interphase. It's not, it's an interphase. It's just being a cell for a good portion of its life cycle. Mitosis then comes at the end of that life cycle and not as much um, time than it takes for the cell to be an interphase. Let's talk about interphase. What is interphase? So the cell is just being a cell. It's a little bit more complicated than that. Scientists have broken interphase into three different sections for the cell. First up is called the G1 phase. This is known as the first gap, hence the G there, or as I like to call it, the growth phase. The cell is resting. It's doing its regular cell activity. If it's a muscle cell, it's constantly contracting, receiving that nice calcium for signaling, all of those important events. In addition, during G1 and during all the other sections, they're preparing for that very energy-driven high enzyme event of mitosis. There's a lot of preparation for that major event in the life cycle. G1, it'll start preparing for mitosis. As I've mentioned, this section of interphase can be quite variable. It depends on the cell type. So some cells that like to replicate often and replace themselves, such as skin cells, they're only in the G1 phase for a couple of hours. And then they'll move on to the next phase of interphase and go from there. Egg cells like ova and females, they are in this phase for years until a certain event triggers uh, for that cell cycle to move forward. So it just depends on the cell, but they will all be in the G1. Um, they will all experience the G1 phase of interphase. Centrioles begin to replicate. You'll learn about that more in a bit when you hit up mitosis. This is how it's preparing for that division event. Next up is the S phase. S is named so for synthesis. Basically what's occurring during the S phase of interphase, so we're still in interphase, we haven't left interphase. The S phase is DNA replication. We have a whole lecture coming up on that. Your DNA makes copies of itself. It replicates itself so that when mitosis happens, you can have duplicate daughter cells with genetically identical material for mitosis. Um, this is a very heavy event. You're asking your cells to duplicate its DNA. You have millions, millions of nucleotides that you need to du duplicate successfully in order to copy the same genes, the same genetic material onto the new daughter cells. This is a very um, detailed process. So this is known as S phase. A good chunk of interphase is spent duplicating your DNA. The cell is also still being a cell that hasn't changed. In addition to duplicating DNA, it is also still performing its regular metabolic cell activities. I do want to point out, you already had um, some coverage on this, but this does confuse students, rightfully so. So I do want to point this out. A chromosome you'll see as either a straight line like this, and in the straight line in different locations, you'll see a little pinched area. This has to do with the kinetochor location. This is gonna be a location where the spindle apparatus attaches during mitosis, just a little pinched area of the chromosome. 
Uh, so it's either a single line that's a chromosome, or you might see a chromosome as an X. Lots of students see the chromosome as an X shape. You're still just looking at one chromosome when you see that X type chromosome, and there's that pinched area right here. That doesn't change. The difference is that this chromosome has gone through S phase when it's now appearing in its X form. What I'm looking at is the same chromosome, but its DNA has been duplicated. Mitosis hasn't happened yet. I haven't split that DNA yet, but it has been duplicated. And confusingly enough, we still call it one chromosome, but we now have sister chromatids. So on this side, the left side of this X shape is one sister chromatid. And on the right side, its mirror image is another. It's kind of a lighter pink color. That's another sister chromatid. They are genetically identical to each other if replication has occurred successfully. All right, I'll clarify that. Moving on, we haven't left interphase. We are still in the regular cell activity phase. The cell is still preparing for cell division. In fact, this is the last part of interphase, right before the cell hits up mitosis. So the cell really wants to make sure that it's ready for that extremely important event. It's known as the G2 phase. This is also known as second gap or the second growth phase. Finalization occurs with some important proteins and enzymes that are going to be a part of mitosis. Okay, you might have noticed in the image that there are these gray barriers here. They look like little walls. What are these barriers? These are known as checkpoints. I have a G1 checkpoint. It's named so for the reason. Restriction point is another name that you might see these um, named after. Here it's located in the G1 area of interface, so it's known as a G1 checkpoint. The G1 checkpoint checks for favorable conditions and whether or not the cell has genomic DNA damage. Because as you can imagine, if I have a cell and its goal after being a regular cell is to undergo mitosis at the end of its life cycle, well, I'm not going to want to copy that cell. I'm not going to want to copy it during S phase. I'm not going to want to spend all that energy to copy the DNA if it's damaged. So that checkpoint checks for damaged DNA. Think of you being in the sun and getting those beautiful rays on your skin cells. Sometimes genetic damage occurs on those skin cells. They're not gonna wanna replicate themselves if they have faulty DNA. So this checkpoint accounts for that and it actually lets the cell stop. Is your DNA okay? Oh, it's not. Well, then we're gonna go ahead and either do a few things which I'll point out, but you are not gonna continue on and replicate yourself. You don't wanna spend that energy and that time and the resources and you're no longer needed for that event. Uh, favorable conditions, what I mean by that, let's say the cell is all well and good and its DNA is not damaged, but let's say that the surrounding areas, there's not enough nutrients available for the cell. It's a very energy-driven process, mitosis is, and for the cell to just be a cell is a very energy-driven process. What if there's not enough nutrients? What if there's not enough signaling that's available for the cell in order to replicate itself? All those different events, the pH level, the temperature, all these different environmental conditions are going to affect whether the cell moves on in the cell cycle. So let's say the cell does pass that checkpoint, moves on. We can see it continues with the G1 growth and then hits up S phase. So that checkpoint really prevents the cell from duplicating its DNA and going even further. The next checkpoint is known as the G2 checkpoint. This guy also checks for favorable conditions. That doesn't change. Is the pH okay? Is the temperature okay? Enough nutrients, energy available? Are my neighbors doing okay? Is everybody signaling for me to move on to mitosis? The cell is considering all these things. In addition, you also want to check for genomic DNA damage. That doesn't change. But the difference, the main difference between the G2 checkpoint and the G1 is that at the G2 checkpoint, which is right here at the very end of interphase, the cell has been able to duplicate its DNA. It's gone through S phase. It hadn't gone through S phase at this checkpoint. It did when it reaches the G2 checkpoint. So at the G2 checkpoint, we make sure that that has occurred successfully. It's a very intense process and there are many different hiccups that can happen along the way. Your cell wants to make sure that it duplicated that DNA successfully before it forms a daughter cell.
what can happen if the cell doesn't pass these checkpoints? The cell can either go through an arrest part of the cell cycle. Basically what that means is just stop, delay, you're done continuing on with that cell cycle. Some cells stop even being a normal cell. Some cells continue on with their normal cell function, but they do not continue on the timeline. Another thing is apoptosis. And this is just a nice fancy way to sell, uh, to say programmed cell death. Uh, it's an event that triggers the cell to kill itself basically, and it won't move on in the life cycle ultimately at that point.